Well, today I put magic in with Henry. Let's see if I can try to get them to breed. And magic right there is not happy about it. G is not interested in letting Henry do his do his job. So they've been here together right now for about a half an hour, and not for lack of trying, but Henry just can't uh, can't seem to get the job done. She uh, she won't lift up for him, and when I reach in and try to do it, try to lift up, lift her up. Um, Henry gets distracted, so, um, she's kind of a, she's kind of temperamental anyways. We call her magic because she's always escaping from her cages. And this is the result of trying to breed <laughs> a, a rabbit that does not want to be bred. So, but, I'll just put them in here and I'll leave them here together for an hour or so and Separate them and then put them back. Put them back around noon time. I mean around supper time. Let's see if we can get done. Get it done. And we have Nibbles over here. She's still doing good. And all the babies looking looking really good. I, like I like I said before, I've never had never had them before so I don't know if that's good or not but they uh, they look really good they're all active and, and got a couple of giants in here and, uh, and a couple of a couple of little ones looks like they're all gonna either be black or white except for one it looks like one's gonna be um, black and white spotted so And then we have Stu in here. Stu was supposed to give birth yesterday or today, and uh, she's not showing any any signs of anything. So I don't think I don't think it took with her either. So it's the second or third time I've bred her, and nothing's nothing's happened. Nothing's come of it. Here, one of the chickens in there laying an egg. So I just gave all the. Uh, a bunch of drone comb to the chickens the other day. And they're pulling out the they're pulling out the grubs. And I just went over and checked the beehives, and I have one that's doing excellent, and the other one doesn't have any uh, any brood in it at all. None. A uh, couple random cells here and there, but. No, no brood at all. Everything's, it's all, um, it's all nectar uh, for some reason. I don't know if the queen died off. I couldn't find the queen. Uh, I don't know if she died off or if they, it, it, there's no supersedia cells. And, uh, it doesn't look like I have a laying worker in there. So I don't know, I don't know what the problem is over there. But if, if, if I don't see anything in the next couple of days, I will end up putting, um, some brood from the healthy hive over into the other one. And hopefully get it off to a good good start there. Um, I definitely have plenty of forage for them. I've been letting the uh, the backyard, the back part of the yard here. I've been keeping it all clover. That's all clover there, uh, except for that bare spot. But I have plenty of plenty of clover, and and they they're working it. So I don't know if I can see any, but. They've been they've been working it pretty good. So I've got the got the hives all worked up right now. They're all I was all set to put the put some honey supers in and uh, put the queen excluders and and some more drone frames, but um, it doesn't look like it's gonna gonna work today. Hopefully uh, hopefully I can get something done with the uh, keep both these hives going. Either that or I'm going to maybe have to consolidate both the hives into one in order to get any honey this year. So, I don't know, these drone frames here, that's what I was feeding to the chickens. What you do is you, th these are a different, um, a different shape than the regular brood frames. And, um, when you have... Um, 
the the way these work is you put them in the you put them in in the in the um, Queen Wooly drones, obviously, and drones last uh, take a day or two longer than regular the the regular worker bees to to hatch and and mature. So um, what what that helps with is the mites. So you're able to track the date that you put these in, and um, you pull them out a day or two before the before the drones are ready to hatch, and you pull them out and just throw them to the chickens. So that way, uh, it gets rid of a lot of the mites. Um, the other thing I do for mites is I use the the screened bottom board, um, and uh, I've also used uh, powdered sugar, confection sugar, um, to coat them. I don't use any any pesticides, insecticides, any of that stuff. Um, I try to go as natural with everything, including the garden and, and the chickens and the, the bees and everything, uh, as I can. That way, uh, I don't have to worry about anything. It's part, partly because I, I know in the in, you know I know that it's better for you, and partly because uh, that stuff's expensive, so there's no sense in, in using it if I can try to get away without it. But if it came down to it for these bees, because these bees are expensive, and this is my second um, time having to buy them, um, if it comes down to it, I might end up having to do something for these ones this year. But I haven't seen to have—I don't seem to have any kind of a mite problem this year at all. So that'll be good. But I don't know what's killing off that other hive. I mean, they're both active, but the the one on the left is definitely—it's uh, probably got four times the population than the one on the right. So. So that's it, a little update.